I have to replace the water pump on the TC, so I'm using my backup car this morning. I don't want to change out the factory radio, but I wish I had something better. One Car Stereo sent me out this portable Android receiver to review, and I think it'll be perfect for this situation. It's not shown on the box, but it does come with wireless Android Auto. The receiver has a 7 inch screen, which looks like a good size for up here. Here's the manual, the suction cup dash mount, the audio cable, although I don't have an aux input on my radio, a plate for the suction cup if needed, the power cord with two USB ports and the plug for the receiver. a sunshade that clips on top, and a little cable clamp. I have the mount positioned on the dash, so I just need to push down on the lock. That seems secure enough. I also rotated the mounting plate this way. The receiver just slides on and down into place. Let's get this plugged in. At top, we have the audio out, AV in, USB, a micro SD slot, and the power port on the bottom. Let's see how long this takes to fully boot up. Since this uses a cigarette lighter plug, there's no constant power wire for it to be able to have sleep mode like an in-dash Android head unit, so it's always going to take a little while for it to start up since it can only do a cold boot, which in this case takes 23 seconds. I was able to connect my Bluetooth with my phone easily. The receiver showed up as car BT underscore and then some random numbers and letters. Android Auto connected pretty quickly after this, and then music started playing out of the speakers on back. But I wanted to play through the car. I'm going to use FM Transmit for this. It has 8 presets that you can program by holding down on the entry, but I'll do that later once I figure out all the open stations in my area. The radio usually has a free station at 87.7. Let's change the setting to match. Now to turn the radio volume back up, get back into Android Auto, and test it out. Perfect. Let's pause that before I trip any YouTube copyright flags. Now to go for a drive and see how well the stand works. I had no problems with the stand or operating the receiver while driving. Adjusting the FM transmitter station when needed was safe and easy, and Android Auto performed well without any issues. Unfortunately, the USB port didn't really charge my phone, it just kept it from losing power. The easy fix was a pass-through outlet with quick charge, USB-C, and 3.1 amp ports. I'll put a link to this one in the video description below. It would be nice if the receiver's power supply had higher amp outputs, but even my regular in-dash Android head unit doesn't have that feature. I'm back home, and I'm going to install the sunshade now. It's going to pop into these slots here, and here, and along the top. Here's what it looks like installed. I didn't have too much trouble seeing the screen without it, but I actually have other plans for it. In my other car, I have an Amazon Echo device installed that I have working in conjunction with my Android head unit, or as much as Amazon and Google want to play together. I'm going to attach it to the top using 3M tape, and then power it from the USB port with a short cord. And now I should be able to use Alexa with the receiver. Something I just noticed is that along with the mic in the front, there's also one on back. This makes it pick up your voice better for voice commands. I rearranged the mount so that my phone is still accessible. Let's test out the Echo. Alexa. What's the weather in Baltimore? Right now, in Baltimore, Maryland, it's 69 degrees Fahrenheit. Tonight, expect a low of 45 degrees. If you set Google Assistant as the default on your phone, you can still use it to control the apps on the receiver. Hey Google. Navigate me to Target in Baltimore. Something to note, when you're connected to Android Auto, Bluetooth music from the main screen won't work. The same with the phone. But that's alright, because I'm using this for Android Auto, and you would play music or use the phone through here. A feature of interest on the main screen, though, is the equalizer. I have it set to jazz right now, but we have electric, pop, 
soft, zeroed out, custom, classic, rock, and back to jazz. If we go back to custom, we can set our own levels. I'll do a quick tune with pink noise later. We can also change the background image with the few wallpapers that it comes preloaded with. You may not notice it in the video, but the date and time resets itself every time it's powered off and back on. I was hoping for automatic time setting if it was connected to your mobile hotspot, but the Wi-Fi is only set up for Android Auto. I checked the Bluetooth settings as well, but there's no tethering option. That's a little annoying, but again, I'm using this for Android Auto, and the time will be correct in here. One last thing to note is how simple this is to pop off and reinstall, making it easy to hide when you're parked. Overall, I'm very happy with how this works. Thank you One Car Stereo for sending it out to me to review. I'll have a link for it in the video description below. If you haven't hit subscribe to my channel yet, please do so now. And as always, thank you for watching.